another doppelganger of yours. I was Googling Chris Lin and uh, a company showed up called Chris Lin Inserts, uh, which is a screwdriver company. Uh, okay. And their tagline is, I mean, I don't know if this is intentionally supposed to be perverted. It's so be good. <laughs> it says the giant in the insert business. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Lynn, giant in the inside giant business. Inside. <laughs> <laughs> which which reiterates who people think you look like constantly. <laughs> yeah, take it how you want that. <laughs> and they have an office in Mississauga. By the way, so just oh, you sure. Want to... so, so should I go for an endorsement package there? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the GT20 Global Punt. That's the series that we're doing. Interviewed a lot of cricketers. Brian Lara, Sherfin Rutherford, Ben Cutting, Azam Khan, uh, Gary Sobers, uh, Jeffrey Boycott. I don't know. There's a lot of cricketers that I've interviewed. I will not pull, put this cup down till this introduction is done. Uh, so check out those episodes and also check out GT20 for highlights of previous matches. Yuvarat Singh almost hitting five sixes. Shahid Afridi smashing it around. Uh, Chris Lynn hitting the ball out of the ground, who happens to be my interview for today. Again, I'm constantly on tour. So check me out doing stand-up comedy. The details will pop up with cities somewhere on the screen. So check that out. Then thanks a lot for watching. Join our Telegram group for early releases. Here's Chris Lynn, hard-hitting Australian batter and a fun guy. Plays for the Montreal Tigers. Enjoy. All right, welcome to another episode of Global Panth. I'm here in Canada, of course. Very exciting time. Uh, today, uh, my guest is uh, a gentleman who scored uh, 2017 for KKR. He had a strike rate of 180. Uh, he's one of the most destructive white ball players in the world. Uh, playing his trade across multiple T20 leagues, etc. Um, one of the marquee players of the GT20 when it started. And uh, also specializes in hitting sixes out of the stadium. Chris Lane is here. How are you doing, Chris? Very well, thank you. Thanks a lot for taking the time out. Uh, match is rained out today. Uh, Montreal Tigers match rained out. So what what happens in a day like this when the match is rained out? Uh, I think a lot of boys have a lot of nervous energy. Like yeah. uh, a lot of guys get nervous at the best of times. But are we playing? When is bus leaving? So all the updates on the WhatsApp group. We were just talking about our phones going off all the time. Yeah. Our WhatsApp group's been getting hammered this morning, but. Um, look, it's not the worst thing. Midway through the tournament, we've had a couple of days off, so an extra day. Um, considering we play actually play the Toronto Nationals twice, two games in a row, yeah, so won't be a bad thing. So we'll be refreshed, ready to cover, and recovered for tomorrow's game. Oh, absolutely! This is an extra day to, to yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just relax. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I got to ask you a very critical question, which I think everybody globally wants to know uh, about Chris Lynn. Barbie or Oppenheimer? What's your choice? Oppenheimer. Oh I don't think I'll ever watch a, a Barbie film. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. What's the movie about? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's about Barbie, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I yeah. figured that much. But um, yeah. yeah, it's not really my cup of tea. I think both the films have the spoilers of the of the content in the title itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's enough for me. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's get into this. Um, um, Okay, one of the main reasons I, I mean, aside from being a fan of uh, of your your hitting in the IPL and across the board, is of course we share haircuts, which yeah. is a uh, very <laughs> very valuable content for me. I was going to fling it, but then I was like, yeah, I might yeah. need a camera or something like that. So cool. it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Don't you feel great, like? Oh, well, it's easy. You get out of the shower, you go like that, and you're away. <laughs> you drive. Easy. Nice, yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you suffer from the bald uh, man complex, which is that I keep getting tagged on random uh, uh, things saying, hey, is this you? I get tagged on a lot. <laughs> um, a couple of guys in particular. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I'm, not, I'm trying not to avoid naming them because it's been done so often. I, I yeah. think you know. <laughs> I, I got a friend of mine who's a close friend of mine who um, got very angry with me saying, hey, you've become a bit of a snob. I said, what happened? He's like, I was in Bangalore. I saw you walk in the streets. And I kept waving at you and you weren't waving back. I was like, I wasn't there. And he's like, oh, it was another ball game. <laughs> yeah. Do we all look the same? Yeah, we stick together though, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, let's let's talk, uh, of course, about cricket. Uh, the Ashes are happening right now. I don't know if you're tuning in. Um, this news just came in that Stuart Broad has announced his retirement from Test Cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah huge news. Obviously, yeah. um, I've only got to face Broadie a couple of times in T20 cricket. Uh, obviously, the ball doesn't swing as much in, in that version of the game, but... I know he's given a lot of bat batsmen uh, nightmares over the years, so there'll be a lot of happy batsmen out there now. Yeah. Uh, but what he's done for the game, on and off the field, has been superb. And you know what he's you know, the energy levels that he's shown, th obviously throughout his career, but this current Ashes series has been phenomenal. Um, yeah, I'm sure Davy Warner will sleep well at night as yeah. well, considering this. Um, 
Yeah, but it's like he's a he's a wonderful person. Um, you know, he's, he's got a lot going for himself. Obviously, we know how good a bowler he is. But over the next couple of years, we're going to find out who the real Stuart Broad is um, away from the game, which is another exciting chapter. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you think? I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty gutsy to declare before Australia have even batted. He's like, yeah. I'm done. It'll be the last one. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. The game might be over tomorrow um, yeah. or the day after, so you, you don't know that. But you never know. I'm still thinking in my mind that Jimmy Anderson's got a retirement in him either tomorrow or the day after. Um, <laughs> yeah. But let's wait and see. You know, they're two greats of the game. And as I said, two of the England's best fast bowlers. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised that Jimmy Anderson retire, is going to retire after Stuart Broad. That's just like really it's, yeah. a, it's a weird one, isn't it? But yeah. everyone's body's different. Everyone's in different head spaces. But... As I said, they're great to the games. They're allowed to go out on their terms whenever they want. No one's allowed to question that. Absolutely. 600 wickets. I mean, that's unparalleled. Mm. Um, okay, I want to ask you, what highlight do you watch of yourself uh, on YouTube? <laughs> where you're like either feeling down or feeling good about yourself. Like, ah. uh, I guess like we're talking about getting tagged in posts and whatnot. It'd have to be the, the, okay, yeah, yeah, the, the six that uh, hit Sean Tate out of the yeah. And you did that a couple of days back in the G T twenty as well. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's always it's always a good feeling. In T twenty, you want to go out there and have fun. You want, uh, and more importantly, we get out there to entertain as well. Yeah. Uh, and I was actually batting with Brendan McCullum um, that time as well. So that's just uh, yeah, a bit of ice cream on top. Oh, that's uh, the same. And, uh, okay. So what is the choice? Is the choice is uh, shunted out of the ground or that catch uh, for KKR? The one. Oh, good, good question. I think. Um, I think the the catch like put me on the map, if that's the right term, uh, without being too cocky. But um, yeah, because obviously that was my um, debut for Kolkata. Yeah. And I got to bat with Jax Callis as well for memory. It was in Sharjah, so I got a couple of runs. And yeah, all I remember the ball going into the, into the lights and I was slipping over and I was like, oh no, I've just played my first and last game for Kolkata. And then, yeah, take the catch. And before you know it, you wake up with a million followers. Oh, oh is, is that actually what happened? Pretty much, yeah. That's how it you went, got yeah. a million followers because oh, of one catch? Something like that, yeah. Holy shit. That's a good <laughs> yeah. catch to take that, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so in 2017, you made the decision to quit uh, red ball cricket and focus entirely on white ball, which seems to be happening a lot more. I mean, variants of it seem to be happening a lot more where people are focusing on the yeah. T20 leagues, etc. Um, a, what prompted the, the, the decision? And uh, B, because it really propelled you even more when you decided to focus specifically on white ball. Um, I guess I had a couple of shoulder recons. So, and I was never a big fan of fielding. <laughs> this just this, this put the full stop on um, on what I was thinking about. I guess, um, you know, the, the pathway that T20 has given me, um, or, or was at the time, was very exciting. Um, and I didn't have to play, you know, four days in a row. So... <laughs> For me, it was a bit of a um, health decision that way uh, on the body. Um, yeah, it involves a lot more traveling and whatnot, but um, you know, I think the best thing that I've done has not looked back on that decision. You know, yeah. Everyone's accountable for their decisions and um, I feel like I've owned that decision. So that's, it, I could have easily you know, gone back and forth, but people would definitely see, you, see right through you in that yeah. regard. So um, yeah, it was tough, but I've got no regrets and I'm, I'm happy with uh, that decision I've made. Uh, I think that was the same year when you had that. Uh, I mean, of all the, the you had a 105 run partnership in five overs with <laughs> with Sunil Narayan. I mean, that, like that sentence doesn't make much sense when you like. I, I mean, now obviously you know that. Okay, Sunil Narayan is a big hitter, etc., mm-hmm. etc., uh, up top. But I mean, how is it to bat with Sunil Narayan because he seems like very, a uh, very z- yeah yeah. Very I, I um, well, I guess even wind back a little bit before that, I batted with um, Gotham Gambia, skipper Kolkata, and who who was a very similar. Um, obviously a, a far better established batsman than Narayan, <laughs> Think so, yeah. but uh, left hand, I uh, love facing spin, so it just, that complemented my game at the other end. So uh, m- myself and Sonny all have got a great relationship, we've played with him for a long time. Yeah. Um, sometimes you don't, you only need to say one word um, to trigger, you know, what we're thinking. So we had a great relationship and yeah, that partnership of 104, 105 in the power play yeah. is something that, um, yeah, is, I think it still stands yeah, it does. Uh, as a record. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's it's one of those things when you were watching it live, you're like, what is, like that happens so much with T20 cricket, you're like, what is happening? This yeah. is making no sense at all. <laughs> I know, but uh, and it was in Bangalore as well. Yeah. So um, a nice ground to bat at, that's for sure. Yeah. And I think uh, you've been doing uh, the T10 league as well. Uh, and uh, I mean, the scores that you see on that are on, you, I mean, this is, it's it's 130, 122 in 10 overs. So uh, do you change your mindset uh, switching from T20 to T10 
uh, or it's just the same and uh, uh your mindset doubles i guess twice as quick or half as much time i remember you know the scores have been around that 130 but i've, I've found my first year at t10 we were getting scores like 150. um yeah so whether the bowlers uh work slowly working it out they are a bit slower than batsmen um <laughs> but yeah it's um uh, it's a great game. You get to have three games in one venue in one day. So as, as I keep alluding to that entertainment factor, there's so much entertainment jam-packed into a couple of hours. How, how is the boundary 40 metres? That's like... I don't no, know. just because it's half the overs doesn't mean it's half the size fits. <laughs> 11 uh, yards bowling. Yeah, yeah. Um, two-piece ball. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's... Um, we do play, yes, yeah, so I've played it in Abu Dhabi a couple of times and that's a great venue. Yeah. Um, again, we're trying to grow the game. Um, we're trying to, you know, put eyeballs on TVs watching cricket that have never watched cricket before. And that's a big thing, um, you know, in my life, not only the cricket, but all sports, you know. That's uh, coming from Australian culture. Uh, that, that's a big thing in our culture. So um, to be able to hopefully uh, influence one or two kids is awesome. But I'd like to think with the impact that I've had throughout the some tournaments, it's a lot more than that. Yeah, I mean, talking about uh, spreading the game, game of course, you're in, uh, in uh, Canada and uh, you were one of the marquee players in 2018. And I mean, it's a crazy list of marquee players, I mean, including you with this. Steve Smith, Andre Russell, Malinga, Bravo, Miller, Narayan, Sammy, Gail, Afridi. I mean, that's a great bunch of people to yeah. be with. So I'd love to know your memories in 2018 because also, I mean, I think uh, one of the uh, reasons aside from the fact that it was the first league in Canada, mm. I think it was Warner and uh, Smith coming after Sandpaper Gate, etc, etc. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's a lot I'm sure to unpack in that particular league. Uh, yeah, it was. So I actually I missed season one. I played season two for the Winnipeg Hawks. Okay. Um, I've, I've obviously got great memories because we won the tournament. Yeah. Um, but even more so, there was so much controversy throughout that final week. You know, we we had I think the Nigerian Prince come to the um, semi final. Wow. And. Uh, without going into too much detail, he came on at half time and did a presentation and usually interchange was about 20 minutes. This lasted for about 45 to 50 minutes. And what do you know, we, I thought we were actually going to lose the game, but we were ahead on Duckworth Lewis and there's no lights at the stadium yet. Um, and we ended up winning on Duckworth Lewis due to bad light. So that actually got us through <laughs> to the final. So that was an interesting uh, moment in the tournament. And then the final goes down to a super over. Yeah. I mean, what more could you want? And then um, yeah, to put the ice cream on the cake is uh, you're hitting the winning runs in a super over against uh, Andre Russell, who's actually arriving tonight for uh, <laughs> Montreal Tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, so a Nigerian prince helped you basically get through to the final and win the tournament. Yeah, I probably owe him a bit for that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like an email chain that worked out. Yeah, Thanks. it was, um, it was, yeah, it was very different, but um, it is what it is. Um, but let's talk about Canada for a second because again, I, I think every time uh, you, you mention it, the, the game keeps growing and it's back after quite a few years now. Um, so uh, with Montreal Tigers, uh, like what's your, what, do you, what do you notice across the board like doing um, uh, matches in, in, in Canada versus elsewhere with the growth of the game and the more interest that's popping in uh, across the board? Um, look, it's no secret there's still a long way to go, but from the season two where I was here in 2019, what I've seen progress has been phenomenal. Um, you know, we've had hundreds of years of practice in Australia to get it right. Yeah. So we can, where do we start? Like the facilities, the facilities now available in Canada um, is sensational to youngsters and they're only going to get better. Um, you know, the players, we've got a couple of local talented players uh, that I've seen grow over a couple of years. Um, and this is only the start of it. Um, you know, we're seeing cricket in America now. Um, we've just seen the MLC. I know, don't want to touch on that too much, but that will impact the yeah. GT20 league. You know, hopefully they're on at separate times next year and we can get the best of both worlds and we can send local Canadian players to the MLC. Um, you know, put them on a, on a different stage. Um, again, more eyeballs watching them so they can get that experience. And then it's going to take a generation of players to filter down. Yeah. Um, but the more access we can give those guys is pretty awesome and it's going to be pretty cool. And the biggest thing is um, telling them it's okay to have a bad day as well. What right. I found is it's make it's make or break from every game. Oh no, I've got to prove myself. The sun will come up tomorrow. 
Yeah. Well, it didn't today because it was raining, but, um, yeah. you know, like don't put too much pressure on yourself. Go out there, play with the fear of fa- without the fear of failure, and you'll actually see a showcase of how good they are, yeah. which is pretty cool. I mean, the MLC and GT20 could just cooperate and figure out a travel itinerary. I think everybody would save money on that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just just put it together. Do a greyhound across. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. If you all made a cash, okay. Uh, but yeah, you did touch upon upon what you just said, which is that failures are, are fine. I think uh, in, in one of your interviews, you mentioned that especially during COVID times, it was, uh, you thought that you were out of sight, out of mind, and yeah, uh, you yeah. had to figure out a way to come back. And um, I'm sure it's got to be very hard as a cricketer uh, during that, because as a stand-up comedian, you were doing shows on Zoom. Yeah. And I don't think you can play cricket on Zoom. It's pretty hard to do MST yeah. for the Zoom. It's uh, stick cricket. I've got a few runs on stick cricket. <laughs> So, so uh, how, how did you sort of uh, figure out a way out from, from that, uh, where you, you're feeling down, etc., and then you lift yourself and now you're, of course, uh, playing a trade everywhere and killing it? Uh, um, so. Well, I guess I actually outsourced uh, a sports performance coach yeah. throughout that time. Um, you know, quarantine, there's no doubt everyone hated it. And you know, we look at it now and think, how silly was that time? Yeah. Um, but... For me, that was when you invest in yourself. There's no price on it, yeah. so that's a big thing that I've learned. Um, you know, and I wish I had have done it sooner as well throughout my career. Because, as I said, I've had many. I've had more bad days than good in cricket, and you know, most cricketers will probably vouch for that. Um, so, a big thing for me is understanding that and feeling okay with it. Um, as long as you're training hard, working hard, good things will happen. But it's not the end of the world if you do fail. Um, you know, so for me, it was building that consistency. Um, and yeah, on those Zoom calls, it sucked. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, who, who has a house party by Zoom? Um, it's, it's not my go-to because I'm a social person. I like getting out. So I actually yeah, struggled throughout that you know, two-year period. But um, coming out the other side now, and I believe um, even talking to our youngsters, um, progression, not perfection. I've used that word, I've used that phrase a lot uh, throughout this tournament. You know, we're not looking for a perfection perfect um, game one of the tournament, let's aim for game 10 when we win that final. Um, small wins, small wins, every day is a small win. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm still learning a lot. Um, I try and put myself in other people's shoes a lot, uh, whether that be the coach, uh, the head coach, the, the bowling coach, you know, the, the young Canadian local batter, because um, then I feel like I can relate to them much easier uh, to know where they're coming from. Yeah, and by the way, pro- uh, progress not perfection is there in the gym as well. Is it? <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, well, there like, you yeah. go. I probably put it there four <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Quite possible. Chris Lind yeah. is keeping it here. Uh, the Zoom was interesting because I remember people were so desperate for company. I remember I was on a Zoom, one of the Zoom parties. Yeah. And one lady got so excited with the Zoom party that she had a glass of wine next to her laptop and just went patak like that. I was like, nice, good job. You yeah, your yeah it's brilliant. But now everyone works from home, so you don't yeah. know if they're at the beach with the backdrops or like, yeah. in the actual office. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw a lot of things in the in the Zoom meetings where people had the cameras on at the wrong time. I saw a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I saw, there was a breakup happening while I was doing a stand-up show. Oh wow! And I, I, I was after a point, you're like, listen, I don't want to over, I don't want to overhear these people, but you can't unmute them because yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I, I want to talk to you. I mean, coming back to Australian cricket right now, especially with the Ashes, because I mean, that's the uh, probably the most yeah. dominant uh, uh, cricket uh, series happening right now. There's a lot more sledging happening from the ex cricketers than the current cricketers towards England. So I'm just, I'm just curious. Is it? Uh, I mean, I don't think that uh, doing banter or or, or talking etc. makes you a nice or a bad person mm. but do you think that uh, that your generation is a little bit less verbal and if so uh, why and does that work for you uh i think i've had a little bit of think about this before in the past and i think because of the ipl and the t20 leagues you know i'm playing with shakib tonight or yeah. today this tournament in in a week's time i'm playing against him in the lincoln premier league right you know so there's you know there's this teammates with that camaraderie that you, there's no actually real sledging, um, especially in franchise cricket, I believe. But in the Ashes, there is a little bit. Um, against India, there's never any because everyone wants to go to the IPL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but you know what I'm saying? Everyone has just been in everyone's change room. You know, the 12 months a year, you might play with the same guy three or four times and against him three or four times. And um, not, yes, there's not as much sledging, but those lifelong friends that you make and what you learn, um, from those guys, whether young, you know, veteran or, or a youngster coming through, is invaluable. 
Um, you, you touched upon uh, probably one of the best all- all-rounders in world cricket going around with Shakib Al Hasan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he's he seems like a mystery to like because he doesn't do too many interviews. <laughs> he's always <laughs> asleep. That's why. <laughs> <It's> an- <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I, I would love to know something about Shakib Al Hasan because I mean I've been a big fan of mm-hmm. his. Uh, whether he's uh, batting, bowling, or breaking stumps, it's it's all all of it is exciting. I mean he's, he seems very uh, I mean yeah. very accomplished cricketer. So what's he like off the field and all the field? We know nothing about Shakib. Oh, he's great. So I played with him at KKR for a yeah. number of years as well. So I've got a good relationship with Shakib. Um, you know he he was the original skipper of this lineup. Um, but because um, he could only play five games, uh, he decided to pass it on to me. So uh, I'm very pri- privileged of that. But um, you know, I, I lean on him all the time. You know, he's got a wealth of knowledge. He's the number one all around in the world. Um, but yeah, away from uh, Cree, you won't. He's a hard man to find. Yeah. But unlike yourself, you got a big checkbook, so you can find him. <laughs> I will, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, using using Babu eighty eight, hopefully. That's <laughs> uh, Okay, we'll do we'll do two last questions and we'll get out of here. You've been very kind with your time. Um, since it's an Indian channel, we have to of course talk about the IPL. Yeah. Um, uh, you, I mean, I remember two thousand seventeen eighteen where you were just absolutely flying high and just it was uh, awesome to watch. Uh, but there's also, I think, the more I talk to international players, it's got to be very hard to be. Uh, selected for a side and then be on the bench. Like Deccan Chargers, you were with them for two years, you played yeah. one game um, and must, be, must have been happy when the franchise shut down. Suck shit. Absolutely. So, so what happens like when you're not being selected, how do you keep yourself sane and happy and motivated in life? Um, yeah, so I only had the one year, one game at Deccan and then I had six years at Kolkata where I might have only played 30 games and then two years at Mumbai um, where I only played one game. But I think as long as the communication levels are there, like I knew I wasn't going to play in Mumbai. So it was a great opportunity for me to get in there, to work hard uh, rather than be in game mode, get in um, you know, pre-season mode as such. And you're still going to be ready to play, but you can work on your drills. You can get in the gym. You can, you can get in the gym a lot harder for a lot longer. You can flog yourself and then build a nice base up for your next tournament. Is, you know, because when you are in game phase, you go easier in the gym. You don't want to be a sore, you, you know, creates a reaction sport. So you want to be nice and sharp, um, you know, but in saying that, I felt like I asked plenty of questions to the guys. So, um, you know, in, I've been very fortunate enough to be in the starting eleven in most other tournaments that I've played. So it was actually a really good so, uh, insight for me to uh, insight on life on the sidelines um, and actually don't take anything for granted, you know, that sense of hunger, um, knowing that you're not in the playing 11, what's it going to take to get in that playing 11? How can I add value to the team away from scoring runs because I don't get that opportunity? Can I help the youngsters? Can I throw balls? Can I go for a walk or play golf with someone? Those little things all add up and, you know, if you're you're someone, a scout or, you know, picking a team, what are you looking at? Are you looking at a team member that offers absolutely nothing? And when he's not playing or someone that adds value to the team. So I try and pride myself on that a lot. And um, yeah, it, it's it's very grounding as well. So no doubt everyone wants to play. But yeah. if you kick up a stink and you're not playing, then, you know, you don't want to be that guy. So just and, and it was quite challenging throughout COVID that through those couple of years, uh, we yeah. were just very lucky. Uh, we were in Dubai and had a golf course on the back and hey. been able to get outside and play golf. But as I said, I'm a very social person, like to be outdoors a lot. So it was challenging and, and I would have had some real crap days and would have pissed some people off. But yeah. um, you know, at no stage do I regret or feel guilty about that because that was, I think that was the nature of everyone's uh, mood at that time. Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned uh, uh, like it's it's time for for, de- for self development. I mean, Shakib Al Hasan mm. did that. I mean, he was not he was <laughs> picked for one of the IPL sides, and he just spent the whole tournament just working on his game, and then he came back and just I, I forgot which tournament came after that. But yeah, well, he's a yeah. prince of Bangladesh. He can do <laughs> yeah. what he likes. So, um, but yeah, Shakib, he's a hard man to get hold of. So yeah. if you do. Good on you. <laughs> I, I, I will tell all of Bangladesh yeah. about it. Uh, okay, um, you play the IPL a lot. Uh, there's been about 40 odd matches in the IPL. I would love to know who is, I mean, this is a fairly basic question. I'm sure you get asked this a lot. Who is good at sort of, I, I wouldn't say mind games, but like banter in, in in the IPL and probably somebody who's probably an in, Indian. Yeah. Uh, is, there, is there somebody who you're like, oh, that, that was good. Good job. Yeah, so we'll start with the deck and charges thing. I think yeah. it had to be the coach, Darren Lehman. <laughs> you know, and he was so relaxed. You know, I've still got a great relationship with him. Um, then Kolkata, Mornay Morkel was a prankster. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's their released um, to 
you know, we talk about winning teams are the teams that gel the best. Yeah. You know, he, he was that like glue around the team that brought KKR together in those initial years. Um, you find a lot of the West Indians only come out at night time, so you don't see them throughout the daytime. Yeah. Um, and then Mumbai, uh, someone like Trent Bolt, you know, yes, they train hard, work their backsides off, but, you know, they don't take the game too serious, which I think we talk about that fear of failure. There's no fear of failure in Trent Bolt's world. He probably takes his batting more seriously than anything. Yeah. I and mean, we can't take that seriously. You know what I mean? So um, that outlook on life, um, you know, matches to those three guys that I've just said. And um, it's a pretty cool way to go about it. Okay, I got the last question for you. I, I, I would love for uh, understanding this photograph that I found of you with Sachin Tandulkar. And whose idea was this dress code exactly? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was actually, that was in COVID times. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it was by luck. Right. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a team dinner night um, that uh, Mukesh and Barney hosted for us. So we had a great night. It was actually my first interaction with Sachin as well. So uh, I don't normally get too flustered meeting you know, other cricketers, but for the man himself, that's probably the best, greatest batsman that's ever lived. Um, you know, it's it pretty cool, but it just happened to work out that we got the same fashion sense. Yeah, I know, I know that it looks like you both are heading to Coachella or something. <laughs> I wish. But yeah, that was in the COVID time, so we couldn't leave the hotel at all. So unfortunately for Sachin, he got stuck with me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Chris, thanks a lot for your time. Really, really genuinely appreciate it. Best of luck for the Montreal Tigers. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's hope you get all the way to the final and win it and peak at the right time and all of that stuff. Uh, and again, um, follow uh, uh, Chris and I'll, I'll put the Instagram handles, etc. Uh, GT20 highlights are uploaded uh, uh, four hours after each game, so check that out. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it, man. Thank Thanks, you so brother. much. Really appreciate it. Go Thanks. the Tigers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah, with Shakib Al Hassan is the Tiger here as well. <laughs> it ties in nicely. Yeah. Super. Thank you so much for your time. Perfect, really brother. Then leave that on. That better be on. We can't do it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, that's why I have backups everywhere. Yeah, I've like actually got a Zoom call right now. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Super. Thanks a lot, man. Take Appreciate care. That, Thanks man. a lot. Thank you so much.